Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless, and today I'm going to do a beginner's tutorial on how to create a snow globe. Now, I'm just going to use a photo from stock photos, but remember, you can ask also cut out your house or maybe your wedding photos or something like that and put them in a snow globe on your own. But I'm just trying to give you the simplest way to start doing this and then you can enhance it from there. So let's get started. So the only pictures I will be using, I pulled both from stock photos. This is a background picture right here. And I am going to use this photo right here. And so the idea, let's just get rid of the background. The idea is you really want the part of the snow globe to be fairly small inside so you have to just be aware of that and I'm going to show you what I mean I'm just going to put this to maybe like here and what I'll do is I'll go to live filters which I'm doing right here on the bottom right here and I'm going to do spherical and I'm going to bring them all up which is way too much and I can move this around and my problem right now there's two problems one is I don't feel like there's enough of a size bigger here. So if, and I also am not sure whether I want to go that distorted. I could bring the distortion down a little bit in the sphere. But if I wanted to go bigger, click on here and change the size. So maybe 1200, which makes it bigger, maybe even 1400. I'll try. And that's pretty good. So I would say 1400 would be where I would choose to go with. Because it's a beginner's tutorial, it's sometimes it's hard for people to make a selection and find the center of that partic this particular circle and find your way around. So all I'm going to do is I have my rulers on and I'm going to just drag out guidelines. If you don't see your rulers, you just do Control or Command R. They turn off and on. You see on and off just like that. And also, it doesn't matter, but if, just for a side note, if you rather have inches, you just right-click in the corner, or, or pixels, you just right-click in the corner. So I am going to drag out my guide by dragging from the ruler and trying to find where that end of the circle is. For now, I'm just going to turn off snapping. And I'm going to grab another one and try and find where this one is, and that's pretty close I think and then I'm going to take from the top and try and find the bottom it's not that easy to see where the curve actually comes around you got to just get really try and get a feel of where this is coming around because you can't always see it and I might be a little bit off but I can live with that and then I take the top one and I do this and once I have that done now I can go to the marquee tool, the selection marquee tool, turn on snapping, and then I start in this corner and it'll snap into place when I get to these sides. So that's about where I want to be. Actually, I think I'm off. So I'm not going to undo that. I'm going to deselect that. I'm sorry. And I'm going to go back to my move tool and I'm going to bring this down just a little bit more like that. And now I'll try it again. And we'll go from here and we'll snap and uh, it's still a little off but I think it's close enough that I can work with this so now that I have that marquee selected I have to right click and do rasterize on that layer because if I don't rasterize it it won't select just the circle and then I can do control or command J and now I have just the circle and I can deselect with control or command D so next I want to duplicate that, Control Command J, and I'll hide the one below it. Now the next thing I'll do, I'm going to use my Selection Brush tool and make just a quick selection. It, and again, it doesn't have to be exact, just of this bottom half. I'm more concerned with the man than anything else, but that's just a quick selection. And I'm going to leave him like that. And then again, I'm going to do Control or Command J. And what that, and then deselect Control or Command D. And what that does, if I turn this off, is that's just him. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because the other one will be behind him anyway. But I wanted to make sure I do that. So now, if I select the layer below 
and I create a mask on that layer and then select the paintbrush. Now remember how masks work. If it's black, it becomes see-through. And if it's white, it brings it back. So I have black and white here. If you don't have it, hit the letter D and, that, and that'll bring your black and white up. And then X can go to white to black. See how they change here? So I'm going to be on black and with a very low opacity brush and very soft, I had hardness zero, I am going to maybe even flow a little lower in this case. I'm just going to kind of come around, and I'm, use, I'm doing this with a mouse, just be aware of that, and kind of just bring it around like this. I'm not going so close to the edge. I mean, the edge of the softness can be there, but not that close anywhere else. And I can paint right over him because remember that there's another one on top that I created up here, so I'm not affecting him by doing that. So I'm kind of trying to get this... I'm even kind of even doing it in a rolling kind of a way like this, part with the circle, and it's not necessary because later on we're going to have a background anyway. But I want to kind of get most of it like that, and I think that's kind of okay. A little bit more on the edges, I think, just like that. A little bit more here, and we don't really want to do any of this bottom. Okay, so now that we have that, and I'll show you what I mean. I have a background I pulled in from Unsplash, and you can see that you can see through this globe right now, except for the man and also the bottom. So that's what I wanted. That's the effect I'm just going for. Now that we have that done, I think I'm going to group this and the man, and this is all one piece. So the next thing we need to do is add snow. So put a new pixel layer on top, like that. And go to the brush, and in your brush sections right here, if you don't see it, you can go to View, Studio, Brushes. And instead of Basic Brushes, I'm clicking it, and I'm going to put Sprays and Splatters. And I just slide up and down to see what I want. And I, this one kind of looks like it could be snow. So that says Ink Splatter. This says Ink Splatter Tilting. I think I'll use Ink Splatter Tilting. And then I'm going to bring up my width really high because this is a bigger photo. I don't know how high it allows me to go. It may not even allow me to go as high as I want, but I'll, I can do that. And now I'm painting with white. And I'm kind of doing, I'm actually kind of going to tap a little bit more here. And don't worry, you really want to get it on the outside. In fact, I'm going to turn this on to show you. Forget about the background right now. I'm kind of doing this. If you drag, you get a lot more snow. So here on the bottom, I would definitely put a lot more snow because that's where it's going to land, like this. You still want to see the rocks, though, so not too far above. But you want to put a lot more. I'm just sliding my mouse. But then on the rest of it, I'm going to try and go just tapping, like, like follow it down maybe. And you use your judgment on how much snow you want. But I do think you should come outside the circle. So I'm clicking. I'm really clicking. I could just go straight down if I want a really lot. And I have to go over him too. But I don't really want too much because you don't want to ruin you know, the actual figure here. And I could get rid of some of that later if I wanted to, but I want it to look a little natural that there is snow maybe on his head or something like that, you know. And put some behind him and in front of him. And I think that kind of works. So now what you could do, remember the man behind, turn him on, and then Control or Command click. And that makes a selection for the man. And then you could turn him off now. And now that we have a selection of the circle, Go back to that snow. In fact, I'm going to name it snow so we don't get confused. Go back to that snow and click mask and now deselect. And now the snow is only inside the globe. And you could lower the opacity like this if you if you feel, oops, make sure you have that selected. You can lower the snow opacity like this if you feel it's too much. And I think that looks about right to me. So now that's good. Let's. I'm going to hide the background again. Above that, I'm going to put another layer, like there. 
and I'm going to in white with a paintbrush, a soft paintbrush. So I want to go back to my basic brushes and I'm going to pick a really soft brush. And, and that means now, let's see what we have, zero hardness. That looks about right. With white, I'm going to paint and make the brush size bigger. I'm using my right bracket. I'm just holding it down. I'm going to just kind of do something like that and something like that. And what I'll do there is I will blur it. I will go to that filter FX, I mean, and go to Gaussian Blur. And in Gaussian Blur, I'll blur that out. Just like kind of like that. You want to just have a little bit of reflection there. And you can lower the opacity, but we'll see how it looks when it's on here. You get you get the feel of light going there. So now I'm taking all of these grouping them, and I'm calling it globe. And let's turn on the back. And before we put a stand on it, I could put a stand now, but let's turn on the back, and I want to shrink it. So you figure out what size, and you notice how everything shows through in the back, which is nice, but you figure out what size you want for this table you know, to show to keep it in proportion. So this could be a fairly large globe right on this table right here. And now I'll get a close up and move it up. I'm holding my space bar as I drag up. Now we need to give this a stand. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to take a rectangle in the shape tool and I am going to just decide how big this stand is going to be. And I'm going back to the move tool and I'm going to move it and and I want these corners to meet So I have to decide where I want it to be, but these this has to meet with this Once I have that figured out I go to up here Because this is a shape and shape shows on top you can convert it to curves So I'm going to convert it to curves and I am going to go to the node tool Which is right under the pen tool and I'm going to start shaping it so what I'll do here is I'll grab this and decide where I want it to go. I'll grab this, maybe here. And I actually think I want the sides to come out a little bit more on the bottom. I have to grab one at a time. I'll select it and my arrow keys, if I click it, moves very small amount. But if I hold shift click, I, it moves further. So I'm going to count. I'm going to, every time I click, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'll take this side just so I know how much I to move it out. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I like that. And now I'm going to take this and just kind of slide it in like that. And that's not so bad. I think that's okay. There should be a little shadow. So I'm going to make another one underneath that. I'm adding a new pixel layer and in black. And I'm just going to draw like that. I'll try that again. Remember, I'm working with a mouse here, so that's about right. And I shouldn't have done this spot. I see I missed it, so I'm going to actually just hit an eraser with that one right here. And then what I'll do on the bottom is I can turn that, I can go to FX and go to Gaussian Blur and blur that out like this. You could decide how much, and maybe I want just a tiny bit more on this end like that. And I'm okay with that too. So now, maybe, I'm just guessing as I'm going along. I'm trying to keep it simple. And you can you can make it as crazy as you want. And you can do a lot more detail than I'm doing. But I'm trying to make it simple. You could take this and give it maybe a gradient. Now, I'm not even sure if it's going to work. So let's try a gradient overlay. Let's click it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one in the middle. So you click in the middle and, and insert. And then this side, I'm also going to turn to black, which is what it was before. And then I'm going to just really, really shrink these down kind of and maybe move it this side. Maybe I don't know. I think it's a, in fact, I think that middle should be even darker. So I'm going to just bring that dark almost like. And this should not be affecting anything else. So it should only be affecting that. It looks like it's affecting other things, but once you let go, it only is affecting that. Next, I think we need to put a shadow under here. So what I'll do now is under the globe, 
I'm going to add a new pixel layer right here. I'll call it Shadow. Take a paintbrush and with a very low hardness, I'm going to just kind of follow this. Oh, but before I do that, I'm going to double click on the color and I really want the color to be, this is a lighter section. So I'm going to pick a little bit of a light, maybe that color for the shadow. And then I'm going to just kind of start painting. Actually, that might be a little too light. So let's try it again. Let's go with one of these, a little bit of a darker brown. And I'm going to just try and do this. I could darken it a little bit more, but I'm kind of going to just go on that angle. And maybe back here, because this is down here, I might put a little bit there, you know? I think that's okay. And then as you're really close, I think I would go really darker. I'll stay in this brown family and I'll make it smaller and maybe like right under here. It's a lot darker. So that's it. So maybe some of you can post your snow globes that you created. I'd love to see them. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you did, please click like and subscribe and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.